the Mounted Police and Canine Department, in Dutch the DLHP, part of the Netherlands National Police Agency. The DLHP operates from Nunspeet, Vouwbrugge and Bokstel and supports police forces throughout the country with horses and tracker dogs. Working with horses and dogs is specialist work. The DLHP has proved its added value time and time again, both nationally and internationally. Early mornings, horses and riders of the mounted police set off. They provide support for all kinds of police work. Most of their time is spent maintaining public order. They also carry out supervisory tasks, check riding stables and animal transport, and perform ceremonial functions. Kevin is a trainee police horse. He has already had three months basic training. He is now doing his practical training with Aramis, a more experienced horse. In this way, the instructor can make use of the fact that horses are herd animals. The biggest difference between a good police horse and an ordinary horse is that a good police horse can deal with stress pretty well. And that's not always the fact with an ordinary horse. You have to be able to maintain control he has to stay cool in every situation. The riders and their horses are preparing for an important ceremonial task, escorting the Queen's golden carriage at the opening of Parliament. Not exactly an everyday duty, but no less important for that. Laza Boss Nature Reserve. It's not accessible by car. In fact, cars could cause considerable damage. A horse, though, is not subject to these restrictions. Horses are nervous animals. They require constant training to deal with unusual circumstances. That also goes for experienced horses. After basic training, each horse is assigned a permanent rider, which creates a bond. Sometimes we have stress situations, where as riders we have to rely on each other. Then it's also important you can trust your horse to do what you want him to. The golden carriage is on its way. The horses and their riders are present in full regalia. Their role on this day is purely ceremonial. At other special events, they also have a patrol function. Flower parades, carnival processions. The mounted police are there. The horses and their riders regularly train together with the riot police, in Dutch the ME. Just the presence of the mounted police alone is often the reason things stay quieter. And in training situations, you have to train for that, and you have to be able to see why things go wrong. The mounted police spends about 80% of its time maintaining public order. Half of that time, they're ready to perform ME duties. The riders sometimes operate without their horses. Together with the Transport and Environmental Control Department, they carry out checks on animal transport. The traffic police do the technical investigation, and we come in to check the transport of horses or other animals, because we are expected to know more about animals than the traffic police. It's routine for us. Riding stables are also subject to checks. They have to meet stringent demands. The Mounted Police also provides public information about crime prevention, for example, by marking saddles. A company has illegally dumped waste in the Laza Boss. Environmental crime is on the increase. 
But so are other problems. Lots of vandalism, of course. Dogs off the leash, tree felling, poaching, hunters, that is, that kind of thing. When there is an increased risk of forest fires, the mounted police often carries out extra patrols. Rex is being prepared for the night patrol in Breda. The mounted police provides extra support for the local police on foot patrol. An important football match. As so often, their presence with the so-called flat cap is enough to prevent trouble. They rarely have to turn out in riot police regalia. A horse inspires quite some respect, and the moment they see you, that alone has a big effect. People think, well, we don't want to get involved in that, so we don't have to go across there to prevent trouble. <laughs> Breda city centre is very crowded at night during the weekend. Rex and his rider pass among the bar and disco clientele. The public find it easier to speak to you. You're high up, so you have a really good overview. If a certain spot is very crowded, we can say, hey, there's some pushing and shoving going on there. And if there's really something up, we can get there fast, at a gallop if necessary, which you'd never manage on foot. Apart from horses, the DLHP also works with dogs. They are employed both in the Netherlands and abroad. The dogs are all trackers. There are four different kinds. Those specialized in human scent, in human remains, in narcotics and in explosives. Daisy is still being trained by her permanent handler. The training period lasts between four months and about one year. The fact is, depending on the discipline, different dogs take different amounts of time to train. You work together all the time, and in the end, the handler takes the exam together with his dog. The dog goes home with his handler too, because we have to provide support throughout the country. And if the handlers have their tracker dogs at home, they can be on the spot quicker. The DLHP also trains and certifies dogs and their handlers for other police forces, for the Customs, the Royal Mara Chaussee and the Railway Police. The force also certifies police patrol dogs. The police in Swallow suspect a crime has been committed. A dog is brought in to search for a possible body. On average, human remains don't start to give off a scent until they're two or three days old, so you can't use a dog specialized in human remains. Until that time, if the body is above ground, you can use a human scent dog. Years later, dead bodies can still be found. Dogs are often used in case of bomb alerts, too. They can find explosives faster than human beings. Sometimes buildings are searched as a precaution, for instance, in case of state visits. The Utrecht police raided a narcotics house. Based on his experience, the dog handler determines the possible hiding places for narcotics and systematically searches them with his dog. The advantage of a dog is that he uses his nose instead of his eyes. You don't have to turn the place upside down. You don't have to wreck everything. The dog can sniff through the cracks and seams, and if he doesn't react, then you're done. In principle, I could search a place on my own. If he went in with a team of detectives, though, half a dozen men would be searching for quite some time. Ze draagt een uh, blauwe spijkerbroek, uh, sportschoenen en ze heeft een uh, donkerblauwe jas aan met gekleurde letters achterop de rug. Nancy went out to play a couple of hours ago and never came back. Parents, friends, neighbors and police have been unable to find her. So a dog specialized in human scent is brought in to help. Now her jacket has been found, the girl must be around here somewhere. 
so the dog is allowed to search freely. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Swalla, the body has still not been found. Using the DLHP's own boat, the small lake in the vicinity is searched. A dog can search underwater too, because scent molecules from a drowned person rise to the surface of the water and are partly carried along by the wind. So if we go out on a boat and the dog sits with his nose just above the water, he can actually detect that scent, and that enables us to trace the position of the body. The Dutch Parliament is evacuated. A second handler ensures that nothing escapes notice. I keep an extremely careful check on my dog, making sure he searches everywhere. I provide the systematic approach, he does the actual searching. So we work close together. My colleague behind me actually has a much better view of the overall situation. If the dog finds anything, he is silent or lies down. Barking or any movement could set off the bomb. I think that there is the procedure follow AOD. The dogs are trained to identify scents with metal tubes. From a range of tubes with different scents, they have to find the one that matches the odors they were offered first. The tubes click into place. Only if a dog gets the right tube is he allowed to have it as a reward. Legal identifications of culprits, weapons and items of clothing are performed in the same way. The search for narcotics continues. Joram knows the basic scent of all the known illegal drugs. He has learned only to react to those scents and, most important, to ignore other scents. If Joram finds illegal drugs then, as during training, he gets a tube as reward. Nancy has been found. As so often, things are not as bad as feared. She got lost while she was playing and eventually fell asleep under a bush. <laughs> Working with tracker dogs calls for constant innovation. The DLHP works closely with the TNO Research Institute, various universities, and the National Forensic Laboratory. If we come across something in the field which we have our doubts about, we have it investigated by the forensic laboratory. If they discover something and think, hey, there's a substance that could be of interest for the tracker dogs, they let us know straight away. The body has been found. A crime has indeed been committed. An explosives tracker dog has also found several cartridge shells. That's important because the body could have been moved, and so could the weapon. But the shells are usually found at the scene of the crime. If Nero finds the weapon too, again he'll get a tube as reward. The butt of the weapon is kept separately. A tracker dog specialized in human scent can sniff the gun butt, which a suspect has held in his hand, and identify the suspect. And if the gun butt is packed properly, the odor can remain intact for two or three years, as far as a dog specialized in human scent is concerned. Dogs and horses. They can do things human beings can't. The experts at the DLHP make use of that fact for the benefit of the police forces, for the benefit of society. So in closing, one of the things I want to point out to people that are new to Liberty.com is our website is so big that when we put new things into the website, it, it kind of disappears into the abyss. And if you're new to Learberg.com, you may not realize that there's over a thousand videos that we've put together over the last 35 years. The vast majority of them are free. I recommend you go there, use the search function, find the videos that interest you, and see the quality of work that we have to offer for free.